Hey, what's up guys? Um, I'm going to make this video here showing the difference between a genuine Spyderco Spiderfly uh, against a cheap Chinese um, copy of it. Uh, I have them side by side. I'm going to just show these both, uh, you know, I'll flip them around, show you different angles and stuff. Before I even start the video, I want you to look at them carefully. Look at all the details. I mean, best you can make out on this video quality and uh, tell me which one you think is the real one. Is this the real one? Or is this the real one? Here's a look at the sides. The backs. Get a better uh, view of this. I mean, to the untrained eye, they're pretty much the same, aren't they? You know? I would say the average person looking for a, a spider fly, which, by the way, is discontinued. Um, if you don't know the whole story behind it, it's, it's kind of a long story, but I'll give you the, the short version of it. Uh, basically, they were importing parts for these, and um, Spyderco got in trouble uh, because they cracked down on importation laws of Balasong parts, and basically they had a big fine, and they seized all the Balasongs, and there's supposed to be a recall. Basically, if you own a spider fly, you're supposed to send it back to Spyderco, and they would give you the, uh, you know, the value towards uh, another knife that they're allowed to give you. But of course, most people didn't send them back. I would, I would probably guess that very, very few people actually sent it back to them. They just wanted to keep them. Um, you could still find them every now and then on the secondary market. There's no stores that I know of that actually sell them anymore. Originally, they were like $85. They were an affordable, quality battle song. Um, but now, of course, being that they're rare and people can't find them, you know, the prices are jacked up. But uh, it's definitely a cool battle song. It's just, um, for me, it's, a, it's kind of a radical design, a little bit harder to flip. Um, it's not terrible. It's not as hard as the, uh, the Saba fly. Uh, but it is more difficult than I'm used to anyway. So, anyway, you have any idea by now which one you think is real? Left, right, left, right. <laughs> well, this one on the left is the real one. The one on the right is the fake. But they are very, very close, obviously, in design. Um, I'm going to go over some of the, the minute details uh, between the two that, you know, something for you to look out for when you're uh, maybe in the market to, uh, to actually buy one. So there's the blades again, very, very similar. Um, obviously, this one says Spyderco, and this one just is marked 440 Stainless China. First off, the, um, the Spyderco is not marked USA or Golden Colorado or anything like that. It just says Spyderco on the one side. The reverse side says 440C. Now, they made this in two different uh, steel variants. When they first uh, produced this knife, they made it in 154CM blade steel. But uh, very soon after production started, they realized that they can go with uh, a cheaper blade steel. You know, it wouldn't be as much to uh, produce them because they wanted to keep the uh, prices down. So they swapped to 440C. So a genuine Spyderco Spiderfly will be marked either 440C or 154CM uh, on the blade steel here, or on the blade rather. Um, this one here is just marked. You know what? Let me let me go back and show you this with the uh, you know my favorite little jeweler's loop. Spyderco on the one side, on the flip side 440C. Okay, that's genuine. The fa and by the way, that's like uh, acid etched in there. The fake ones are stamped 440 stainless china. First giveaway is these are you know not marked china. Uh, another giveaway is it is stamped in there. It's not acid etched. Um, and also 440 it doesn't tell you what kind. It just says 440. It doesn't say 440C. It could be 440A, B, um, another variant. And then the other side is sterile. There's no markings at all. So the first biggest giveaway is it's not marked Spyderco. Okay, so obviously it's not a Spyderco. This is a copy and not a counterfeit. There are counterfeit ones out there that say Spyderco, but they're not actually from Spyderco. That's the difference, is that this is made to look like this, but some of them have fake markings, which actually make them counterfeits. They're pretending to be that. This is just looks like it. Um, but let's go over some of the details. I mean, first, obviously, uh, total uh, fit and finish and quality is, is much, much higher on the genuine Spyderco Spiderfly as opposed to the, the fake. However, again, in an untrained hand, you know, or two untrained eyes, people probably wouldn't figure out the difference, you know, to an average person. If, if I gave you both of these and it wasn't marked, you know, you wouldn't probably be able to tell me which one's which unless you're a really, 
really, really into your battle songs, you know. Or you have uh, experience with, uh, with spider coat knives in general. But anyway, let's close these up and look at some of the differences here. Alright, the first difference that I noticed when I first grabbed this is the, um, the tension on the spring latch. Okay, they both have spring latches. The real genuine spider coat is always going to be in my left hand for this uh, video so you don't get too confused. And the fake is going to be in my right. Now when I want to release this latch, notice the gap in between the handles to see how much I actually have to squeeze this. Squeezing it, I'm squeezing it, and then it pops, okay? There's a good amount of pressure it takes to actually have that pop out, okay? I have to actually squeeze it, all right? On the fake one, it's like a hair trigger. I mean, I barely touch this, and it pops out. I mean, I could probably do it with my pinky here. Just, I mean, I'm barely, barely going to touch this with my pinky, and I can see it pops out, okay? So first off, it's not very secure. In fact, most of the time, when you're handling this, and you don't even squeeze it, you know, just by looking at it and maybe turning it around, this latch pops open. Okay, so that's one problem. It's a very, very light um, release, okay, which is not, not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a squeeze before you get that latch out. Reason being is that if when this is clipped to your pocket, you don't want it opening up in your pocket. Okay, so you're allowed to, you know, have some room where you're going to bump into it a little bit and it's not going to open. Alright, so that's the first biggest thing as far as feel. Um, they both have the wire clips on here, but if you look at them closely, first of all, this one's dented or bent, bent sideways. But um, this uh, fake one has a, uh, a silver coating of some kind uh, to match the, the finish on the handle. Um, the real ones just have a bare stainless steel clip. Another thing is all the hardware. Actually... I'm looking at this. Let me bring you nice and close. First, let's look at the real one. The real one's going to have your torque screws. Okay, so it's star-shaped. And you can see mine has a little of a... Uh, mine's pretty dirty. A little bit of surface rust from storage. i got to clean that off. But anyway, you can see the um, torque screws. Okay, look at notice the, uh, the finish on the head there. On the screw. It's a high-quality screw. Here we have a dented up cheap um, uh, like an allen head screw which looks to be somewhat I mean I never even touched this since I got it and um, it seems to be a little bit a little bit marred up and dented okay so obviously the difference is these, these would be hardened uh, screws you know tempered this is just a soft metal um, you can unscrew this and screw this back in probably I don't know, a few dozen times before you have any problems with this one I would imagine after two or three times uh, removing it and putting it back it would strip the head okay so it'd be useless um, again, hardware or hardware throughout. I mean, if you look again, let's take a look at the real one here. The, the hardware holding the uh, latch in. Again, another nice uh, Torx screw. Man, you know this doesn't look that dirty to the eye. Once I put the jeweler's loop in there, I'm like, holy crap! I got to clean this one. <laughs> I'm glad I took it out. But anyway, fake one, little Phillips head, all dinged up. All right. So at this point, you should be, you know, when you're inspecting this, you should start getting. You know, concerned. Uh oh. You know, this might be a fake one. But let's continue on. Um, let's look at the hardware for the pivots. Again, real one here. Let's look at the pivots as well as the uh, pivot pin. There's the uh, Torx screws. Okay. And the pivot pin, you can see, is also tapered or beveled on the top. It's called a crown, I believe. You can see that ring around the very top. It's just it's just angled a tiny bit. Get that to focus. Okay, let's look at the hardware and the pin on here. Again, Allen head screws, kind of cheap. They're, they're a little bit dinged up already. Now, even though you have the um, that ring on here, the crown, just like on the other one, it's very hard to see, but you can see it's not completely um, a clean cut. It's cut to, towards your right side of the pin. You see how it's all ruffled up a little bit. Very, very, very minute details, but you know what? That's what it's going to give away. Um, the difference between the fake one and the real one. Also note the uh, the second pin here. If you notice, there's two pivot pins. One to keep the pressure while it's open, and the other one for uh, when it's closed. You can see this is recessed under the handles. Okay, it actually goes into a channel, cut out inside of the uh, the handle there. Oh, if I get it on in frame. Okay, so it's recessed in the handles. On the fake one, there's just a gap. So look, look right here. 
that one's just on top the real one is recessed another giveaway okay just just real minute fit and finish you can see the, the back of these screws how they're raised okay on the back of the pivot pins you can see how those are raised above the handle okay on the real one it's completely flush very good fit and finish you know a little stuff like this and um, you know it doesn't take a whole lot of time to really I mean when you have them side by side it's very easy to point out okay well this one's fake this one's not um, very simple to do but to be honest if you took one of these away and I just handed this to someone you know as far as weight they're pretty close you know looks are very similar it takes a very trained eye to tell the differences between them uh, obviously markings are going to be your your best bet it's the easiest way to uh, to compare them but let me do an actual weight on these to see what they what the difference is got my little scale here let's see let's weigh these in uh, ounces make sure I am at zero okay first I have the real one the genuine spider coast spider fly weighs in at 5.81 or 5.82 ounces it's kind of teetering back and forth let's call it 5.8 okay let's uh, measure the imposter here that measures in at 4.8 so it's one ounce lighter and to be honest, in the hands, look, I'm just handling it, that thing popped out again. Very, very hard to tell the difference. I mean, honestly, having these both here, without the scale, I would probably say they weigh almost the same. I mean, only one ounce off is a very close difference. So, anyway, there's some other attention to detail. I mean, just the, uh, the cutouts and the handle here. Let's flip this over so we're both on the clip side. Um... You know, the, the cutouts are a little bit more rounded uh, towards the tip here on the fake one. Might be hard to see. They're a little bit, a little bit pointier on the left-hand side. Um, I mean, the actual cuts are just cleaner. There's just little things like that. The actual finish here, I mean, my finish is dirty, so it's not a great, uh, great comparison. But the one thing I could say is that this is a bead-blasted stainless steel. And this one here is who knows what kind of metal. But there's actually a coating on it, okay? They, they painted it or dipped it in something. And if you can see that, I don't know if you can see that. See the line that goes down the middle of the handle? That's where the, uh, the coating on this, where it's been painted, has actually bunched up a little bit. And it's kind of a little bit of like a lump. So it's not a very good finish. You can see on the genuine one, there is no line at all. Let me put those side by side. Real ones on the bottom, fake ones on the top. Little stuff like that. I mean, like I said, it's a very fine detail. Notice the cutouts here. Okay, the cutout on the left. See how crisp, crisp that is? I mean, you can see it's a little dented from use, but you see how nice the cutouts are? See on the right-hand side where it's just molded? You know what I mean? Look, look at the difference. There's the knockoff. The little cups. You can see how those are cut nice and crisp. So, just, just you know, attention to detail, that's all. But anyway, this one is the genuine Spider Coast Spiderfly. And this one here is the uh, Superfly, I've, I've seen it called. There's numerous names. A lot of times they'll spell it Spiderfly. They'll spell it uh, S-P-I-D-E-R-F-L-Y as opposed to the real one, which is spelled with a Y. S-P-Y. Um, you know? So, just you know, look at the details when you're looking for these things. As far as price, again, used to be 100 bucks. This one here, most of the time, $20 or less. If you're looking online and you find one of these and you think it's a real spider fly and you see a price tag of $20 or $30, I promise you it is not the genuine spider fly. Are you going to be just as happy with it? As far as flipping, they're going to feel the same. They're going to feel very close. Um, if you're going to actually use the blades, it's a huge difference. This is a you know, poor quality steel, probably poorly heat treated. Um, this 440C, or even if you get even better, if you get the 154CM version, it's going to cut a lot better, performance-wise. Um, you'll notice things like, you know, the pivots are going to start stripping out a little bit, and, uh, you know, especially, especially once it gets loose and you have to keep cranking down on this to tighten it, you're going to find they strip out, and, you know, little stuff like that. So, you know, is it worth it for $20? Well, if you can't find this one, and you can only find this one, yeah, it's no big deal. I mean, if you really want that style knife and you really want to try it out, for $20, it's not bad. But just don't think that you're getting the real one for 20 bucks. It's just not going to happen. Um, if, it, if you do actually get a, uh, the real one for $20, I, I think that's awesome. That is one heck of a deal. 
um, but it's very unlikely. So just want to make this video. A lot of people, you know, send me messages from time to time saying, "Oh, I found the Spider Coast Spiderfly. It's, you know, what a great price. They're only asking like thirty-five dollars for it, and it's such a deal. You should get one." And you know, I, each time I have to explain to the uh, the person writing me that, um, you know, it's just a copy. And I, I figured it's time to make a video and actually show it. And I really want to thank one of my friends here online who was able to, uh, he just picked up a couple of these uh, um, super flies or, you know, whatever you want to call them. And uh, he was able to send me one out so I can do this video and do a comparison. So I really want to thank him. Um, but anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I hope this helps you out a little bit. You know, now maybe you can uh, figure out which ones are real and which ones aren't. So anyway, thanks for watching. Take care.